Hello and welcome to another episode of Easy Peasy Video School. We got Jamie here. This is our second week doing it this way. And of course, we have our little hiccups here and there. But um, I would say from last week's experience, we had some things to learn, but it turned out pretty good. And I think um, uh, a lot of you said that uh, that it was it was good. So let's just go ahead and, and a lot by I mean like a couple of you. So we're gonna keep on going with this. Um, and and this is for our uh, our Facebook our private Facebook group. Um, and if you haven't joined our free private Facebook group, go uh, to Facebook and search for Easy Peasy Video School uh, and look for the private group. This is where you can have uh, access to the live streams where if you have any questions or comments that you can uh, throw them in the chat live and we'll go through them uh, through our episode. So as you're watching this, if anything comes up where you have any questions or you want to say anything, uh, throw it into the Facebook group chat and... Um, our and usual we'll friends aren't here. I know. I think maybe because I didn't send the email out. Oh, no. We forgot to tell them that we were switching it up. What do you mean switching it up? That we didn't send the email before before the live stream. Oh. Well, sorry, guys. But uh, if you're watching this, it's probably because you're watching it on demand. <laughs> so even still, if you have questions, throw uh. it in the comment section and we'll answer it this way versus this way <laughs> anyways we're talking about adding graphics to your videos which um we've had several questions in the past from our members uh talking about graphics as it is really an important thing i think for a lot of uh people who are creating video that like it, it does make a difference as far as like the look and feel of a video where it makes it look just more clean and crisp and, and interesting and stuff like that but it's also very intimidating because graphics and stuff oh that's scary and and we don't necessarily just know how to add graphics to video it's not a a, a common um you know trait that we have born inherently so i i know it can be super intimidating the thought of doing it but um it can there's there's ways to make it where it's easy um there's some basic rules of thumb that will help take a lot of the guesswork out of it so that's what we're going to be going over today um so let's go ahead and get into this. Um, why should why would you want to add graphics to your videos? What are some of the benefits of adding graphics to your, to your videos? I think having graphics makes it look more professional, mm -hmm. and like you can use graphics to to um, tell things that you don't want to you you don't want to waste time on like isn't wasting time but you don't want to introduce each speaker by name and title and organization so when you put it in a graphic then you don't have to um use time on that they can just see it on there and you can leave it on for a lot longer than if you just said it out loud mm -hmm. um and it, it makes it more interesting to look at and i i'm trying to look for our um, cause when you were talking about like how, how it can be intimidating, if yeah. you watch our episode on, um, brand identity, that Which has episode 13, I episode believe. 13. So easy peasy video school.com backslash 13, the number 13, it goes, oh, we went over like font choices and like mm -hmm. color choices. So all of that same stuff applies here. So, um, like some people might get excited like ooh fonts yeah. and they'll use like like a really fun looking font with like the outline and like just go a little nuts and then that's when it starts to look unprofessional so you want to um have a professional look to your graphics and i think for um many videos when you see graphics added that almost has this feel an appeal of like oh this is like a legit video versus if there's no graphics it's like oh like anybody could have shot that and made that yeah. so it's it's these are little sometimes subtle things that you don't even consciously know as you're watching it like what what the difference is between say an amateur versus a professional looking video um but because we're so trained to see it um yeah. you just know something's off if if it's missing or not done well um okay so as far as um different ways that you can add graphics so jamie had mentioned like putting the names and stuff like that but there's tons of different 
types of graphics or ways you can use graphics. So uh, we thought we'd just run down a few of them that might be uh, relevant to to you guys. So um, first of all, uh, what is an opening card? So just I just have to say this. The word card is not like an actual like video terminology. Like if you went to if you hired a professional videographer and you asked for an open card, they might not know what you're talking about. We just use that term because that's what all our clients say, so they know what it is. I don't actually know why they call it that. <laughs> I, I think it's because a lot of our nonprofits um, use like PowerPoint presentations and stuff. Oh. And so they're used to, even though it's technically video, I guess, they have these like slides or cards um, oh. in the beginning of their presentations. That's what I think. Why don't they call it an open slide? Because I, I, I don't know. I, my guess, again, is that they know it's not a PowerPoint presentation. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> but everybody uses it. Anyway, so, so for the opening card, you generally want it to be something fast because people will, if they're scrolling their feed, if this is for social media, they're scrolling their feed, you don't want to have the opening card on for a long time. So under three seconds is good. And if it's just like the logo, your logo, or like some kind of... Um, text that says what the video is but I think the most important thing is try to keep it fast like some people will try to put a ton of information on there like this is the logo your address like the speakers names speakers organizations like nobody's gonna want to stick around and watch that video so in your opinion what is the best or what are ideal reasons why you would want to add an opening card for a video because we're not saying that every video should have an opening card so what would be an ideal reason why you'd use it personally i don't like them hmm. i rather just why? not have it and just get into the video because then you have a better chance of catching somebody on the feed who who is scrolling but a lot of a lot of organizations insist on it because they want to have the branding up top Gotcha. And branding meaning like having their logo. logo. So it's like the first thing you see is like, oh, this is company X. And it's like, OK, now we've yeah. got, you know, established who we are. But uh, to Jamie's point, when you're dealing with the quick um, short attention spans of viewers, you they all say like you got three seconds to catch yeah. their attention. If you spend the first three seconds with just your logo or opening graphic or the opening yeah. card and, and it doesn't resonate with them then you lost them so yeah but that's good to know because again for some people it's it's important and it's necessary and and sometimes it looks really cool you know it's like yeah so we we're not saying like don't do it it's just that i think up to your it's not discussion. super necessary yeah okay the next thing then we have the opening card what about the end card what is an end card and and what would you put in there the ending usually uh, your logo and maybe website, maybe call to action. All of those things would be determined by what your actual call to action is and where the video is going. So if you're showing it on your website, you don't need the website on the video or like you don't need to put like your address and all of that. People are used to um, putting all that information on there because videos were going on TV. So you needed a lot of contact information. So like your phone number and all of that. But if you think about how your video is going to be used, people are already able to just click on a thing and get all that information. So think about your most important thing that you would want people to come out with. And then the other thing to think about, if you're having your video on YouTube, YouTube will allow you to have 20 seconds, up to 20 seconds for end cards and that is their actual term for it end cards and that's where you can put up um like a, a graph a little circle button thing to subscribe to your channel or suggested videos for them to watch so it's just um additional ways to keep the viewer on your channel so i i like to put a graphic up there at the end so that it's not covering um like if we put it on this where we're talking the two things would go over our faces so if you have an end card that's 20 seconds, you can use YouTube's end cards. And uh, sorry for looking distracted, but uh, we actually had the wrong page up. So when Jamie said, oh, our usuals aren't here, that's because we were on the wrong page. Our usuals are here. So hi, guys. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. And uh, we have the live chat open. So if you did say something oh, we didn't answer, 
page. Um, just uh, throw in your comments or questions again because I see a blank right now. And I don't know if that's because I jumped on late. But anyways, um, okay, so now that we got end cards done, uh, earlier we kind of mentioned like if you have a name of the speaker up on the screen. So that's what, what we call supers. Now these are terms that we use a lot and we're not saying that you got to use them, but um, this is the ones that, that we use. So I think it's good to know because if you're communicating, if you eventually are working with a professional, then if you use these terms, then you'll be on the same page. Yeah, but a lot of our... Um, nonprofit uh, yeah. clients every time I say these terms they're like I don't know what you mean and I have to try to explain it and yeah. it gets long but uh, this is uh, this when you have the names on the bottom it's the superimposed that's, what that's it's why it's a yeah. super so the the term for it is supers so what is uh, I mean we already said what the supers are but what kind of tips or things would you have to say about that like when would you use a super or why I think most times when you have somebody speaking, you have you would like be good to put a super up. So the super is usually the name, first name, last name, um, their letters at the end. If if that's if they have letters at the end, and the position and company. But all of that is, um, I mean, that's just in general. It doesn't really. You can decide what you want to do, and you just put it up to identify the speaker. I think this one is uh, important because like when I'm watching, say, like a documentary or something like that, uh, sometimes they'll put up the names and things like that when we first see them on yeah. screen. Um, and, and then I go, it takes away a lot of the guessing, like, who is this? Why? What? You know, what's their relevance to this video I'm watching? When I don't see those, I get distracted pretty easily because I'm just constantly wondering, like, trying to fit the pieces like okay i hear what they're saying but what mm -hmm. is their position or what is their relevance to to this story and uh i i don't fully pay attention because i'm trying to figure out you know the math equation of like who is this and why are they here and what's their what's the point of this all so that's always good to help um anything that you want to say as far as like creating these or it's just this is just more to explain you know what do you mean creating it? So when we're saying like, oh, there there are supers. That's a type of graphic. Do, do we? Would you ex would you want them to know like how it's formatted or anything like that? Like the ideal position, like bottom left or bottom right, or do you want to have a little logo next to the name or anything like that? All of that stuff is optional. Like mm -hmm. it it all depends on whoever's doing it. Their their design, what they want for the aesthetic. Um, you can put it anywhere. Like it used to always just be on the lower, that part of the screen where my fingers are now. Yeah. It used to always just be there. The bottom left. And that's like how they do it on the news. So it's left justified and um, with like two lines and the top line is one color and the bottom line is another color. And But now you just kind of, kind of up to you. Like it's good to follow your branding hmm that's a good point yeah we've done some where, where it's kind of like floating like yeah sometimes i'll just put it central. anywhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially if like if like i don't want to have a solid background and then the people's shirts are like all different it might be easier to read over a part of the wall so it just just depends on how the person wants to do it mm-hmm Okay, what about, uh, the next thing is, this is my favorite term, a bug, <laughs> a B-U-G. What is a bug? <laughs> it's called a bug. It's not, I don't think it's an acronym for anything. That's that's another term that people don't normally use, but it's just the, the logo, usually the logo of the event or the organization, and it's just on screen the whole time. Usually it's white and um, opacity is, like it's transparent, semi-transparent. So why is that? Why would it not just be like your full color logo on the screen? White is easier to see on a variety of backgrounds. And um, period. <laughs> and why would why would you want to have a bug on the screen? Because basically you're saying that the logo, whatever the image or logo is that the bug is, that you leave it up there throughout the entirety of the video, correct? It's just for branding. So that no matter what part of the video the person is watching, if they skip through or if they catch it, yeah. 
midway, then they they automatically know like, oh, this is yeah X Y Z organization's video. This was super popular, like in the 90s and early 2000s like every commercial they would have a bug on it but i don't see it as much now i think um i think because because it's online so like when they're watching your video yeah, your name is there. already above the video and below it like it's not as necessary now so but some people still like to do it what could so we have some reasons why it would be uh, beneficial but are is there any negatives like reasons why uh, it could be a, a problem um my only guess is like if it's distracting like yeah it covers if your up. logo doesn't work small then i wouldn't put it on because it'll just look weird like, a, like if there's fine thin yeah. font and it's illegible yeah then sometimes what we've seen is it just looks like a little tiny blob yeah or if, if it has a lot of if it's a, a picture but it's like a lot of fine lines and it's super detailed then it's not going to translate well on a in a tiny part of the screen yeah okay we're going to get off of my favorite term <laughs> <laughs> on to um you know using uh text we're talking about how you can Jamie earlier mentioned about how um, sometimes text is good for when you can say things that you don't want to have to have it verbally said and it just, you know, cuts some of the time down. So what uh, what is an example of when using text, aside from just like describing their name and introducing the person, how else can you use text in video? I think this is very youtube -y, but like when they put up like a fast text thing that's like, Here's my point. Here's my other point. Like that. But I, I think you can stylize it to make it not so obnoxious looking. <laughs> but. <laughs> or it's like bullets on the screen that, that's like outlining your point as if you have a slide deck. But. Yeah. Uh, or then sometimes too, like even if you're talking about like facts, especially, you know, data. Yeah. You know, rather than just only hearing like 75% of da 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 yeah. do this. You can also emphasize that point with the visual of the data point on there too. And then um, another way could be to um, to replace narration. Like a lot of our clients are always saying, oh, maybe we'll just do a voiceover. But uh, as a professional voice actor, <laughs> um, that is really difficult. One, to find a talent that can um, do the narration in a not sound like a robot yeah or a scared robot and in an engaging way too um like you probably would want to or have to hire a professional which yeah. for this purpose we're talking Defeats about like low purpose. low budget right <laughs> and then two um you know it, it it adds more to your production like you got to set up you know recording time and make sure yeah. that it's quiet and edit the volumes and all that stuff it's just way more work when instead you could just replace the narration with text narration, right? Anything that you want, there's some maybe some tips about that because I know that there's been times when I've seen narration text done poorly and it's distracting or difficult. Uh, trim it down as much as possible. Like, don't be wordy. Make it just like, like headings. Like, don't treat it like a paragraph. Treat it like headings. So short sentences um yeah you don't need like a lot of adjectives because that's hopefully the job that your video will be doing that the, the the images are doing the job of the adjectives so just keep keep your points tight yeah we've seen um sometimes when people write narration as if it's like a book you know yeah like a chapter in a book and the whole page is just words and i think especially for the younger generation that would be a yeah. real turnoff for me it would be as soon as i see i have to do that much work <laughs> and have to read that much i'll just be like ah never mind it only mind. works for star wars <laughs> and even at that like it moves so fast i'm like oh i gotta hurry up <laughs> and for the longest time i didn't quite understand all of what was being said i just kind of uh -uh. got glimpses of it and now um, after watching so many of it, it's like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're talking about. <laughs> uh, so speaking of text, uh, another thing that we want you to make sure of is when you're using text in your videos to make sure that your text is legible. That's something that we kind of touched on a little bit as far as font choices and whatnot. But 
um, you know, talk a little bit more about uh, making sure your text is legible on video. Um, other than the font choice? Yeah, or um, as far as like the colors and using shadows and all that kind oh, of stuff like that. Oh, we talked about shadows in that other episode. So shadows, I think, is kind of outdated, like the drop shadows. You can do it. There's a way to make it more subtle. Like before, people would just do a black um, uh, box, like 50% opacity oh. shadow on the text. And that's like just what everything looked like. But I think shadows are a lot more subtle now. So if you have to use it, oh, this is going to get way too technical. That's OK. We're, ha we're halfway there. <laughs> It's just a this little is nugget. something I learned from my old coworker. If you're doing like, like a drop shadow, and then it's like on like a blue sky. If you did a regular standard black drop shadow on a blue sky, you're really gonna notice it. If you use the eyedropper, the color picker, and then pick one of the blues from the blue sky, and then in the color thing, bring it down a lot so that it's like a darker. So it's it's like a dark gray, but it's tinted Cut blue. It'll look a lot more natural and then play with the opacity and all those other settings to try to make it look as subtle as possible while still making it more legible. Yeah. And, and although that was really technical and stuff, the point of it is, is sometimes people just put text um, straight onto the video, but there's, you know, lots of colors, the image, since this video is constantly changing and stuff. Yeah. And so you, it's hard to just see a single color font. Um, without any kind of background to keep it the background consistent so what to Jamie's point that's something that you can do to make it more legible um, and then um, anything that you want to explain as far as other points or suggestions for how to make text legible so we already talked about the right font choice making sure it's legible it's not like really frilly and thin lines and stuff like that. We talked about backgrounds to keep the opacity or whatever. These are all, I just threw out words, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, really, <laughs> don't be intimidated. I, I actually don't know some of the meanings of them. I just say it to sound, to sound smart. So when I'm designing a super, I feel like supers are the hardest thing because they're the smallest and, and they go in the most places and it has the most information in it usually. So I'll take a screenshot of the video where it looks the hardest to see, where it, the super is going to be the hardest to see. That's going to be when there's the most color, like if the person's wearing something with a, a print, like it. Like a loud a like a, shirt or something. Yeah, like a jam shirt. That would be hard. Mm -hmm. So I'll take a screenshot of that and then put it into my graphics program and then design the super over that and try to make it legible there. And then take take that super and then put it onto all the different video sections where I'm going to have to put supers. So say there's like eight speakers, I would put that super on all eight people to make sure that it's legible before I make all eight supers because I don't want to pick a design make all eight supers with it and then go in the video and find out that it doesn't work on three of the people and then i got to redesign all of it so i wish i had like a, a graphic and sound effect that i could hit the button and go pro tip because that is like that's such a great <laughs> hack as far as not even hack and again i'm using terms wrong but that's such a great tip because um i would have been the type that just design stuff and go through the whole process until finding out the oh, yeah. end that, oh shoot, it doesn't work on some of these. Now I gotta redo the whole thing. It's such a waste of time. I only know this because I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> I've made like 15 supers and then found out that the design doesn't work. And then like, oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> and also use the super or use the, when you're making your, your demo version, use the longest name, longest oh, title. Oh yeah, that's another good point longest company name so everything is the longest that it's going to have to be so because going shorter is fine going longer is going to screw you yeah. up all right and uh sticking back with uh you know using text as narration on on the video and we're using the star wars analogy uh to to that point going back a little bit um this just popped in uh, you want to make sure that 
the the narration is up long enough for someone to be able to read it. <laughs> and one of the easiest ways to do that is for you to read it out loud as the video is playing. Most people read it in their heads and you can read in your head a lot faster than if you were to read it out loud. Yeah. And that's to read it out loud is more fair comparison to people, uh, your audience, which has a variety of reading skill levels, right? Because mm -hmm. I think um, that's the most frustrating part is if you're reading at a comfortable pace and then the words disappear off the screen. Like, hey, I wasn't finished reading it, right? Yeah. And I think especially too when um, n beginner editors, they want to read it as fast as they can so they can get to the next part of the video. And that's not the best thing for I'm a video. slow reader. And so I thought that if I read it in my head, it's fine. But it's still a difference when I say it out loud versus reading it in my head. So doing it out loud is super important. And you also want to be cognizant, is it cognizant? <laughs> of your, uh, of the older audience too. Uh, a lot of older audiences tend to take their time reading. Um, so you don't want to make the, the viewing experience um, yeah. frustrating for them. We've gotten this feedback. Even <laughs> reading it out loud and adding a few beats on the end, it was still too fast. Yeah. At the same time, you don't want to leave it up so long yeah. where it's just like, is yeah. this the end of the video? Is, <laughs> is it frozen? Is so, yeah. these are just things to keep in mind. There's no like uh, hard and true fact of like, it should be X amount of seconds long. Or the... Can I share it? Thing I heard about TikTok. Okay. Go so this it. is like a TikTok thing. I'm learning about TikTok now. Like they leave the text on for shorter than it takes to read it because oh. they want people to, to watch it over and more over. Yeah. over and over. It's so, so, the, so, just so dirty. And I've, <laughs> I've noticed that I have to do that because I'm a slow reader. So I have to watch videos like three or four times to read all the captions. So even, so like if I leave, it, my phone on to a specific TikTok and it just keeps replaying over and over automatically. It counts it as counts views. As, oh man, because a lot of times, like, it well, counts not, as watch time. There's many times know. that I've just been like washing my hands or something and I put the phone up. Oh on yeah, they're up, getting credit. And I'm like, oh, I my hands are wet, so I don't want to move to the next one so it just plays like 15 yeah. times <laughs> it adds to it, I don't know if it counts as more views maybe it doesn't but it adds to watch time oh you lucky <laughs> you lucky sum of my guns <laughs> getting all this free credit from us just because you're washing your hands and I slow I'm a slow reader uh so I know we're going through a lot of stuff but um I know. It's you know so whether long. you're watching this on you know, YouTube or Facebook or the replays or whatnot. Um, just let us know in the comment section if there's any, you know, other graphic questions or issues that that you're facing that we might be able to help you with. Um, and maybe we could also make like future episodes on them too. So um, by all means, even though if you're watching this and, and the stream is over, but you still have questions or ideas, like throw them into the comment section. We, we, we'll, we'll be looking for them. All right. So, um, Going back to what we were talking about, when you're looking at um, placing text and graphics on the screen, you want to be aware of what another cool term, <laughs> industry term, title safe. So what is title safe? Title safe is the margin around the screen that that possibly is going to get cropped out depending on what, uh, what device the viewer is watching on. So... If you're using an editing software, it'll probably show you these things. It's like two boxes and then it has like the little things around it. But those are all just to give you guidelines about what could possibly get cropped out. See, and this is as an amateur novice, this is something that I never thought of and didn't even realize. And when you say it could get cropped off or chopped off at why is that? Because even as I know all the different devices that things can be washed on, I, I didn't even realize this was an issue. Because video, like, it's all different on different phones and stuff, too. Like, some phones crop more top and bottom. Some crop more from side to side. So 
um I think your player is just trying to when you say make it full screen. So if you're if you're not watching full screen, I think you'll be okay. The viewer won't have anything cropped out, but most people watch videos full screen, so the phone will or the or the tablet will blow it up to fill the screen. So when they blow it up, depending on the um the, dimension? the dimensions of the video, part of it is going to most likely get cropped out. Yeah, so back in the days, we all had TVs which were all the same dimensions. But even but no, nowadays, uh -uh, that's no? not true because oh. TVs were different. So, so even with the four by three square looking TV, like it had a different amount that could get cropped out, like on your Sony, whatever, and then your oh. all the different ones. So there's there's always been title safe, and for HD TVs, so it's always been a problem. Yeah, so. This all goes to the point that people could be watching your video on their laptop, on a computer monitor, on a TV, on a phone, on a tablet. And as we all know, there's tons of different shapes and dimensions for those. So um, following title safe will, will ensure the best chance of you having whatever you want yeah. seen to show up. Okay. Um, and we did a video on that earlier. And that one was, was it our first episode? Okay. so. Uh, if you want to search for our first episode, it's there. Otherwise, uh, on our website, easypeasyvideoschool.com backslash one, um, you can see more about title safe and, and framing and stuff like that. That was our friend Brian's uh, request for that type of episode, and I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> uh, as far as like the location of where to put graphics, uh, where should people be generally aiming to put graphics on as far as here on the screen where is the better place to to put graphics on the bottom is safer if you're just overlaying the graphic over the video the bottom is safer if you if your thing is going to have like a margin around the screen like if you're making a border on the top and your video is not going to go over or the border on the top is going to cover your video anyway that's not what we're talking about this is just for for like graphics that go over your video, bottom is safer because you have less risk of going over somebody's face. Yeah, that's this is where the money maker is. You don't want any graphics going across people's foreheads and stuff. Okay, and if you're designing graphics in uh, a different software than what you're editing on, so like let's say if you're designing um, in like Photoshop or something or Canva, and you're editing your video in I don't know premiere or something like that um, you want to make sure that your design is big enough for video right so how what are some of the you know things that people need to be on the lookout for and, and wary of when they are designing in another software outside of the editing software if you're designing in Canva you can choose the template for video and then that'll automatically make you all good if you're um, doing it on your own, HD video is 1920 by 1080 pixels and 72 uh, deep dots per inch, 72 DPI. DPI. So um, I always go bigger. Like I go way bigger than that. I'll, I'll make it like two or three times that just in case, not for supers, but I'll make it bigger for logos because logos sometimes, bah, I just talk too much. I'm rambling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So you just don't want to design it small and then have to put it onto video and it's like like too small and you have to make it big and then the edges get all funky looking. And pixelated. This and is stuff. another thing I did in the beginning. Yeah, I think um, it's, a, it's a common mistake is that, um, you know, you're used to using maybe graphics on like computer screens for like, I don't know, things like that. But on video, the quality of the graphics need to be so clear because um, it's gonna get blown up on, you know, screens and stuff like that. And you also want it big enough that it shows up where people can see it and stuff. So um, this is something that like, ton like a lot of our clients will send us, you know, graphics Hi. or logos and they're like, oh yeah, it looks good on, on my computer screen. But as soon as you, you know, expand it to the size it would appear on the video, it's yeah. like, 
super blurry and fuzzy because it's it's a tiny file and it was made tiny so we for most of the things that we talk about we all say like just go big and you can always scale yeah. down but you can never scale up that's kind of like the rule of thumb there and then the this is a question we've gotten before in the past um and these are two terms that we see all the time and have no idea what they are <laughs> and that is uh you can just you can make your designs as rgb or cmyk what the heck are those letters and what what do you do with those <laughs> or what do you use color modes and rgb is red i think it's red green blue i don't know what else it could be and cmyk i had to look this one up cyan magenta yellow key key means the part where it can go see-through um so if you're designing for video video is rgb um, website is also RGB, CMYK is print. And they're just um, different ways of interpreting the color. So if you have something that is RGB, you can change it into CMYK in Photoshop. I don't know if other um, software allows you to do that. I'm sure it does. But when you do that, it'll look a little different. Like the, um, the colors will usually change just slightly. So if you want it to look like what you think it's gonna look like then and if it's for video or web then just do it in rgb okay easy enough right you don't need to know the why just know rgb when we're talking video that makes it easy for me okay and then uh the other question that i usually get is like what format do what type of file should i save my you know, graphics in or in in my case they're asking what kind of file should they send it to us um and it's it's a fair question because you can do like PNGs, JPEGs, PDFs, uh, Illustrator files, vector files, all kinds of stuff like that. Dot AIs and all kinds of weird letters things. What is the better way to save your graphic files for video? The dot AI is Adobe Illustrator. So uh, nobody's going to be asking about that. <laughs> um. You'd be surprised what I get. <laughs> So if you have a bunch of stuff and you're sending it to an editor, just send them everything you have. <laughs> like as long as it's big ones, yeah. just send them whatever you have and they'll, they'll use the best one. If you're saving it yourself, um, PNG is a better thing. Like they'll, um, Canva will let you choose to export as PNG or JPEG. And it says that PNG is recommended. So just stick with that one because it's a better compression format and your images will like your, your text, the lines will be clearer and it'll look better. PNG also preserves transparency. So JPEG, if you save something as a JPEG, it automatically adds a white box around it. And we've had people send us uh, JPEGs that were a white logo over a transparent background, but because it's a JPEG, it's just a white box. <laughs> so if you, if you have something that has a transparent background it has to be png if you want it to work yeah so that's the easy and short answer i don't want to get you any more confused we're just going to leave it at that answer. png just remember those three letters so we, we went, rgb png uh, yeah R, rgb png that's the new motto for when you're video editing so we went through a lot of stuff i know and um jamie's probably like oh man i talked too much it but is so this long. is a lot of information but it's um just if you made it this far and you're like we talk so much i don't remember anything here. and this was requested so so it's your fault <laughs> <laughs> you asked for it <laughs> So I'll, I'll make it easy as far as like, here's all the things that we've talked about. And if you forget any of the details, you can always go back and rewind, but it's for your kind of like your checklist of things to remember when it comes to editing or adding graphics to your videos. You want to make sure that your text is legible and that it's on screen long enough for people to read it. You want to be aware of title safe and your graphics so that they don't get cut off. You want to make sure to tend to try to put your graphics more on the bottom half of the screen so that it's not covering people's faces. And um, you wanna make sure that your graphics are big enough for video and that you should design your graphics in RGB. Remember, that's our first one. Uh, and then also save your graphics as PNG files. So see, 
it's when I say it like that, it's not a whole lot of stuff, <laughs> but we had to explain them all. So that's your your recap of the things to think of and be aware of when making videos and adding graphics. And of course, um, you know, if you got any questions, um, need us to explain further or we totally confuse you more, just throw <laughs> a comment uh, in the comment section um, and we'll get back to you and, and hopefully uh, untangle all of this mess in your brain um but don't be intimidated by this again well uh, for for our friends here we're looking for easy quick to do and you're not trying to make it perfect remember our motto done is better than perfect and so if if graphics are what's keeping you from actually making your videos pick one thing to to use the graphic on or, or to focus on and and you can learn as you go yeah so don't worry. This is a lot, but you'll get there. It's it's easy. Um, so that's it for today. And if there, if you think that this is a video that would be helpful to others like yourself, help us out so that we can reach them by liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing this video, and all that good stuff that YouTubers like to say. <laughs> and uh, and I mentioned if you want to be part of our our live stream and and you know put in real-time questions and stuff, uh, then join our free um, Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group. Uh, the link to it is in the description below. And it's a fun little community of, of people who are trying to learn how to uh, make videos easy and such. And so we have we have fun there. Uh, it's, a, it's a good group of people. So I encourage you to join that. And again, if you didn't do so yet, download our guide on how to shoot video with your phone. It's uh, for, for a lot of people, your cell phone is all you have and that's all you need. And so this guide will help make it super easy for you to start shooting your videos using just your phone. That The link is in the description below and uh, we'll catch you next week. Uh, well, maybe. I'm not too sure what our schedule is next week, but we'll catch you next time on another episode of Easy Peasy Video School. And, and 